Hey, good morning, folks. Welcome back to the CCMA Initiative. Glad to be back. Took a little break, um, but we're back, right? And so we're on Chapter 9 of the CCNA 200-301 um, Official Cert Guide, okay? And so where we left off at, right, um, in Chapter 9, of course, talking about spanning tree concepts, is we just finished discussing, right, the process of electing the root switch, right? We talked about the election process. We talked about tiebreakers, right? If not, you can go ahead and watch the previous video, right? But with building a spanning actual tree, right, in its own layer two topology, the next thing that we would have to do, right, is go to step two, right? We need to go ahead on each switch that is not the root, elect the root port, okay? Right. And so that second part of this process, right, to go ahead and choose, you know, a root port. Keep in mind, there only needs to be only one root port. There only can be one root port. All right. And so very important concept to understand. Right. About this is that. A switch, right, a switch of root port, right, it chooses that root port based on the least cost to reach the root switch, all right? And I wanna make sure, and this session is gonna be short, it's only gonna be talking about choosing the root port, I really wanna break it up, but it's regarding the least cost, okay? A lot of the mistakes that, you know, that I've made in the past, right, trying to understand spanning tree, and of course people I've talked to is thinking that um, cost being associated with that physical medium, that interface, what have you, right? Is that, oh, it has a direct connection. It has a, you know, lesser cost than, you know, other connections throughout a spanning tree topology, right? That is a false sense of thought, right? Because again, cost, the total cost, right? Total cost. So if we're looking at the topology on my screen, we see to, you know, on switch two, right? The cost towards switch one, right? Is four, right? And that's using switch two's interface, okay? And so that cost is four, right? But let's say, right, to get to switch one as well, because we're talking about redundancy here, you know, there the cost to reach switch one, right? Hypothetically now, would be two. Right. And that's going through switch three and, and of course switch three going to switch one. If we made that two, right, the path switch two would have chosen, right? Its root port would have been the other other interface that's facing switch three. Right. And this is at a high level. Okay. As far as I'm explaining it, right? So don't get fixated on, oh, this is the interface that's directly connected to the root switch. This must be the root port. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. So that's simply it, right? So again, within this process, right, we're we're just on step two. So BPDUs are still being sent. They're still being sent between these switches, right? We're calculating and everything is, is happening, right? Right. And these switches are going to make sure that they try to come to the same co conclusion. But essentially, they're using a different process, right? And so let's, I want to make sure, and of course, now we're getting low level based on this diagram. I want to make sure that I make, you know, a point here, all right? And we're going to get a little bit in the weeds here, okay? Every switch uses, you know, a different process, right? But they try, they're trying to come to the same conclusion, okay? They're trying to say, hey, who is my root port, right? Because again, we have to make sure we make a stable spanning tree. All right. So let's look at switch two, right? Because all this is in details now, right? We got we got markings and what have you. All right. And so switch two, we just spoke about, you know, it can use different paths, right? I let you guys know, right? It's using cost, right? It's using cost. So let's look at switch one. Switch one is the root bridge. Okay. With it being the root bridge, right? It's going to send hellos, right? Hello BPDUs, we spoke about that, right? After it's been elected as a root, 
and it's going to send is going to send those BPDUs saying that hey the cost of the root is zero right out of all my interfaces okay I'm going to go ahead and send it to you guys this is my cost switch two and switch three is going to receive it okay on their interface now let's stop right here on that interface there's a cost associated with it and that cost is used within the calculation of cost towards you know towards a root or towards a path or what have you okay so if you're looking at the interface gigabit zero slash two let me go ahead and get my uh get my little marker one second like my little pencil there we go all right right we go right here okay so the interface cost is four okay interface cost is four switch one advertises a cost of zero right so what is switch two doing to begin the process of choosing its root port it needs to it needs to process and see which port on its switch has the least cost so it's going to do some math so with switch one's cost of zero root cost of zero and that interface cost of four the total cost to the root bridge right using gigabit zero slash two is what four okay all right let's go to switch three and let me go ahead and change the color right now let's do the calculation here same thing right switch one being the root it's going to go ahead and advertise a cost of zero it's the root right switch three its interface has a cost of five all right, so it's going to go ahead and do that calculation, right? Zero plus five, right, equals five. This is the cost for this link, right, for this path, this physical medium. All right, now here's where the math gets muddled, right? Because even though switch two and switch three aren't the root, there still are switches within the topology, right? Because at the core of the theory of spanning tree is that it is preventing loops on redundant links. We have redundant links throughout our entire topology. Okay? So, with that being said, right? We have a cost of four, right? On switch three, right? The interface cost of four, right? There's a cost of four on this interface as well, right? But what's happening here, right? What's happening, right? So that BPDU from switch two, right, is going to send its root cost to a non-root bridge. And it's going to share and say, hey, the root cost I have is four, right? Here's the cost that it takes to get to the root. It equals four. All right? Same thing on switch three. Right? And it's going to say, hey, the root cost, the root cost is five. It's going to share that. Right? And so they got that communication out the way. Right? But let's go back to the interfaces. Let's go back to the interfaces. So the interfaces, right, they have a cost of four, each of them, right? It's not shown on switch two, but switch two gigabit zero slash one has a cost of four. Gigabit zero slash two on switch three has a cost of four. So now within this physical medium, right, they're broadcasting their interface costs, right? So what happens? So now it's doing that calculation, right? And both of them are saying, hmm, okay, including my interface plus, you know, my neighbor, that total cost is eight. Okay? That total cost is eight. So now I'm going to go ahead and say, hmm, all right, so this, this link, right, has a cost of eight. I'm going to choose my root port, right, if we're talking about switch two, 
to be the one with the lesser cost, which is going to be four. Switch three is going to say, hmm, on this physical medium, it's eight connecting to switch two. All right. I have a cost of five. I'm going to use this lower one. All right. So that's how that total cost is made, right? That's how the total cost is made. And that's how the root port is done. So with that being said, everything always isn't perfect like this, right? Sometimes we're going to need a way to distinguish, you know, if values are the same. So we need a tiebreaker, okay? So these switchers, of course, they, they need that tiebreaker just in case the best root cost ties, right, for two or more paths, right? If that tie occurs, right, the switch then applies these tiebreakers that I'm about to say to the path that tie, right? Choose based on the lowest neighbor bridge ID, right? So whoever has the total, because we talked about bridge ID, and I can go ahead and go back and go ahead and, and clear all my drawings, right? If I go back, right? Everybody has a bridge ID. Whoever has the lowest bridge ID, in this case, it would be switch two. If, if the values were the same all around, it would go and say, hey, okay, tiebreaker, we're going to use the lowest neighbor bridge ID. All right? Okay. Next, the tiebreaker, let's say, for some reason, let's say the bridge ID, right? So the bridge ID is two parts, right? Well, let's say they're, you know, they're even there. We're going to go ahead and go, we're going to choose based on the lowest neighbor port priority. Okay. And again, this is regarding the root cost for two or more paths, right? If there's a tie there, okay, for the root cost, last but not least, the last tiebreaker is going to be choose based on the lowest neighbor internal port number. Okay. All right, so I just wanted to talk about this today, right? Tomorrow we'll have Lab Fun Day and we'll see this in action and I'll show you guys, right, um, how this is done. And I'll actually, you know, take a step back and actually show you guys how it looks in Microsoft Paint because the greatest thing you can practice with learning about spanning tree and how I learn is doing it on paper, right? We're learning the theory, but we actually still need to learn what the Cisco device, right, the Cisco switch is actually doing in that process. And once you understand that, you understand how the process works, um, spanning tree gets tons, tons easier, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to end it here, right? And I'll see you guys tomorrow.